So being uh, the knowing, this is the experience here now, consciousness knowing the way it is, not knowing about something, difference. We connect knowing with knowing about things. But knowing, <coughs> direct knowing. And this is the reality of this moment in the born into a human body, separate form, seemingly separate form in the universe, conscious, experiencing the karmic formations of the body, the feelings, the perceptions, mental formations, sense consciousness. Now knowing then is, is like contemplate the subject-object experience of, be of, a, of a separate form, like from this point here where I'm sitting, I experience consciousness, which then is affected by the things that impinge on the senses, so say with the eyes, you know, I see other separate forms as an object. So it's just reflecting on the way it is. You know, it's not no great discovery or New Age revelation. <laughs> it's recognizing uh, it's like this. Then, uh, then if I'm starting from the self-view, you know, I am Ajahn Sumato, and then I, I see you as this person, that person, give you names. That's a conventional reality. We have conventions, social conventions, cultural conventions that we, we're conditioned with, you know, and we acquire those seemingly you know, this is my seat here, and I am this person, this body. But in uh, knowing directly, you know, in, in this way of pure conscious knowing without attachment, then it's a reflective ability. So you're kind of observing the way it is without identity. So when I really look in terms of I am Ajahn Sumato, that that's that's a perception that comes and goes according to condition. But there's still c consciousness and knowing, and we tend to. Uh, think we know all about things, so we, we have, we acquire, we're educated and we have knowledge about all kinds of things and opinions, strong views, prejudices, preferences, likes and dislikes. And these are conditioned. <coughs> these are not ultimate realities. So you put them into the you know, the Buddha gave these expedient teachings, such as the, the you know, reflected this morning on the five khandhas, rupa, vedana, sanya, sankara, vinyana, the f called the five khandhas. Now, what, what the Buddha was doing when he uh, taught in this way was simplify everything, because, uh, you know, in the terms of the conditions that I'm experiencing, it seems to you know, on the terms of qualities, variations, and permutations, unconditioned phenomena, it goes to infinity. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. The, the subtle, the coarse, the refined, the, uh, the mental, the physical. One gets overwhelmed by, by all the, you know, variety 
an intensity of of uh, sense experience. So in this way, uh, just intellectually, you're using five categories, rather than in, in just endlessly being uh, 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 caught up in the infinite variety of qualities, conditions. So what this does is it simplifies you know, on the intellectual level. You're, you're simplifying everything rather than making it more complicated. Five, five categories. Five is a uh, is an easy uh, number for most of us. We've got five fingers, and I can see all five at one moment. <laughs> but if you know in the in the Buddhist terminology, the eighty-four thousand. Now try to. What what does eighty-four thousand? You can't see eighty-four thousand. But there are eighty-four thousand fingers in this room. It'd be hard to get perspective on them. <laughs> you spend the whole retreat counting them. But everything, every condition can fit into these five categories. Everything that we experience through the senses and the mind, uh, you know, has, can be put into one of these groups. And so, I and then you're contemplating the anicca anatta of conditioned phenomena. So well, it, it's a simplification to get the perspective of impermanence. The pace and karani cha, all conditions are impermanent. So it's, it's not a, you know, it's, it's not not something to to grasp either, but it's a expedient means, a way of of reflecting on the way it is in which we're we're not we we uh, can get perspective on the conditioned realm that we're experiencing, the body, the the sensitivity, the Vedana, is, is feeling, translated as feeling, or, you know, it's pleasure, pain, and neutral Vedana. So that's three kinds of feeling that we're in, in this infinite variety of, di of permutations on feeling, different kinds of pain and pleasure and neutral feeling we we don't really pay attention to it doesn't doesn't you know we we usually are you know, aware when we're feeling pleasurable or painful neutral feeling is what we're feeling most of the time at least i know most of the feel you know sensory feelings neutral neither pleasurable nor painful. But when I pay attention to them, then I'm aware they are. They're present. But usually, you know, before I wasn't, you know, didn't bother. Boring. Neutral feeling isn't, you know, it's pretty boring. Concentrate on just the pressure of your, just the touch of your clothes on your skin. Now, if, if my belt's too tight and it feels uncomfortable, I'm aware of that. But if it is not, if it's just right, then it's neutral, so I don't you know, don't notice it till it starts. I, you know, I start getting some more uh, stronger beta now. Now this is obvious, isn't it? But pay, knowing the way it is, so that we're Actually, observing uh, and and awakening to sankharas or conditions. Now, in the word, English word condition, it means that which begins and ends. And so then, they use this kind of unconditioned and conditioned. Conditioned phenomena is everything you know that that we experience. So it be subtle, coarse, 
and uh, physical, emotional, mental, memory. So these five categories include all this, uh, like sanya, kanda, sanyas, like the ability to remember. And then we perceive things through through naming them. So we say this a man, a woman, and uh, uh, this is a clock, these are spectacles, this is a bell, those are nuns. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, now these are conventional, these are conventions, but we, we create these conventions you know, different languages have different sounds for, for uh, you know, say this is a clock. English, naliga and tai. So it's not a matter of, of uh, there being one right name, but it's just a matter of the language you learn and what the sounds you project onto it. So these are, these are, conventions developed in human societies to communicate. But uh, we tend to cling to the words. We, we think we know something because we have a name for it. So we live in a, in a, in, you know, we, we believe in the, in the perceptions, the way we perceive things, and we're conditioned to perceive in certain ways. So like this, you know, we all know this is a bell, don't we? We've all agreed that this this is a bell because, you know, I ring it. <laughs> and, uh, and yet, if I was just sitting here, you might think it was a dish, a bowl, or an ashtray. <laughs> I mean, if you know, if we we've we've we're using it as a bell. You see, so you could use it as a little dish. You could put sweets in it and put sugar in it. Use it as a sugar bowl and things like this. So, but we perceive it as a as a bell. That's how that's agreement of uh, how we see this this thing. So. If if one of you thinks it's a sugar bowl and you put sugar in it and, <coughs> and you offer it to me, then I say, you can't do that. You can't put sugar in a bell. <laughs> <laughs> and taking objects and, and then, you know, like, like, you know, concentrating your attention on so that you, the, the actual condition perception of it falls away you know so you know then you in the then you're getting to the suchness at this moment you know by through eye consciousness you know, I'm not I'm not naming it or, or thinking about it in terms of you know this is a this is a bell and Anyone who uses a sugar bowl is stupid. <laughs> but, but then, if uh, if I, you know, get over the, the 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 kind of conditioning way of looking at it, then then one begins to, you know, in terms of referring to it, it is what it is, and then we decide, you know, they say this is a bell rather than a sugar bowl. Now this is this is a way of re contemplating, you know. So you begin to to break down the. the sometimes this is a permanent sugar bowl, and it, it's it, and any way other way of using it would be wrong. And and we get into you know people, you know, get into murdering over, you know, like the the is Islamic cartoons and things like this because. You know, you perceive things, and this is sacred, and uh, and and it can't be seen in any other way. So, anyone that doesn't see it the way I do is an infidel, should be punished for 
desecrating a sacred uh, teaching or an object. So we get into, you know, uh, strong views and then actions then uh, that come from that. So uh, what I'm doing now is reflecting. Now when, when I let go of all the conditioned ways of looking at this, you know, then it is what it is, you know, as, as suchness. Now this is this is a this, this this way of thinking of it is what it is 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 a way of reminding yourself that you know you, the, there's there's seeing there's consciousness the object before I give it before I decide what it is you know and define it in terms of its use or its sacredness or whatever. So this way you you begin to 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 uh, let go of these kind of uh, these fixed views, the way we hold and and uh, and then get upset or or feel frustrated when when uh, those views are challenged or something that we we have is used for something that you know something that we can't see how you dare use it for that or call it something else or see it in any other way. So you're getting to the, you know, the conscious, sense called eye consciousness before you project onto it. Like, I call this a bell. That's my projection, isn't it? This does not say it's a bell. It doesn't say what it is. So, so I say, this is a bell, not a sugar bowl. And just, uh, you know, th- this, is, this is how we're conditioned to uh, the conditioning process. What cultural conditioning is. Then I might say, you know, claim it as my bell, this is mine, and that, that defines it even more as a, as a my possession, then the re- Jandi says, no, that's a retreat center's bell. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, <laughs> and then I say, no, it's mine, and then we get it <laughs> to creating bad feelings because, you know, it's we're arguing about who whose it is and and this sense of mine, isn't it? This belongs to me. I'm the owner of this bell. This is this is a created condition. A sense of m- me, me as a person claiming ownership of this. I create that. Then another way of of looking at sankha in the, in the five khandas, uh, you know, the body, rupa, vedana, is feeling, sanya, perception, sankhara is uh, like conceptual proliferation. It's uh, thinking and uh, emotion. So, so I. This is a bell, and then uh, then I proliferate. Uh, this is a this bell is uh, Japanese, and it's uh, and it, you know it's I like this bell, and this is a better bell than your bell, and you proliferate onward about, and this is mine, and the the whole proliferating thing of of uh, you know. That comes just through obs- think, observing or seeing this as mine, or you, you know, you you start seeing the sankharas like in other ways, emotion. You know, this I like this. This is mine. I like shiny brass bells from Japan, and and if I see them, you know, I want one. 
<laughs> now this is a rather neutral object, fortunately, you know. <laughs> and I don't want this ballet thing. <laughs> But it's also in consciousness, isn't it? It's, you know, in a, this is in the consciousness of this moment, I consciousness. So there's consciousness. So this direct knowing is, is you know, contact, I contacting the objects and the, and the consciousness of it. And then, then the naming, this is a bell. And then the, this is my bell, I like it, and I want it, and it's not the retreat center. <laughs> oh, it goes proliferating. I could spend the whole retreat, you know, uh, proliferating around that. Now take, for example, uh, when, when you're born, <coughs> baby is born, it's a conscious form. Consciousness is, you know, it's a, you know, becomes a separate conscious form with, and it has a body, you know, so you have the, the body, the rupa, and the vijnana. This is, this is not, this is, we're, we're not, we're not, you know, it doesn't announce itself and say, I'm a baby and this is my body. Uh, you know, this is you know it doesn't doesn't think yet, uh, but it feels you know it's sensitive form. So it you know it feels heat and cold, pleasure, pain, hunger, and and then the the just the the natural conditions of having a separate body. It's feeling that. But then, so so see consciousness not as it's not not a cultural or personal reality. It's 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 natural, it's nature. The body also is is natural. It's uh, you know it's a. I didn't make this body. It was, it just you know it's a. The, it belongs to nature, but then we c start claiming it as we're conditioned. This is my body, and and all the the proliferations around it, naming it. You are a boy. Uh, you are. Uh, you belong to this family, this group. Boys act like this. Girls act like this. Uh, I want you, you know when you're a good boy. I love you. When you're a bad boy, I don't love you anymore. So you <laughs> when you're a good boy, and you know, I'll treat you. I'll give you reward. When you're naughty, then you're going to be punished. Reward and punishment. So we get the messages. Uh, you know, the condition, the cultural condition messages of through reward and punishment, through through being told what we are and how we should be. What is acceptable in in our family, and what is not. So, this is this is a conditioning process. The the sanya sankara. So we acquire language. We have memory. We remember. Like we have retentive memories. So I can remember, you know, back to when I was three or four years old. Last uh, July, I visited my the place, the ha house that I first lived in, when from about the age of from birth to about five years old, and uh, then we moved to another house. And so, when it's in Seattle, so when I I went to uh, see the house was gone. They built a nicer house, <laughs> bigger one, but I could remember 
you know, from the sanya, you know, mem- brought back all kinds of memories. Because I could still recognize certain things, you know, <coughs> different house, but the garage was the same. And the, the uh, you know, I could, you know, it would bring, just looking at the, 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 the grounds and the, and the area it was in, I would bring back memories from when I was four or five years old. So that's a retentive, we retain things, we, and, and this is why we can, we can think and analyze and uh, we have language and remember through language. So the particular thing like the, the pavements uh, that go by the house, you know, kind of the formation of that. When you're, when you're a, ch- a little child and you're learning, everything's new. So these memories can be quite strong, you know, the things that you might not notice when you're an adult. There's quite new discoveries when you're three years old. So I just noticed like the, just something like the, the way the pavements were brought back to memory because that was obviously something uh, that impressed me as a, as a child. And yet most of the places I lived, I don't bother to notice the pavement. <laughs> Just walk on them and take them for granted. But, <laughs> but when, you're, when you're a little child, you know, you, it's, uh, everything's new. You, you, know, you're not, you don't have a lot of knowledge in other things going on, so you, you, you know, everything kind of uh, is new for you. And then you, you told these, uh, in, in America, we call them sidewalks. These are sidewalks. Now this is, this is just reflecting on the conditioning process. So that more and more you're, you're not creating your reality through, through the conventions anymore, through the conditioning. It's a direct knowing, getting to the source. You know, before the condition arises, before the before the perception of something arises, and so it's quite empty. You know, it's not, and we give it we give it its quality. We we project onto it. This is beautiful. This is not. I like this. I don't like that. <coughs> Now this is uh, this is a way of breaking down the assumptions uh, that we've acquired, you know, because we are conditioned and and w- and we're trapped oftentimes into the conditioning of the mind, the the, the sense of a self is, is me as a person. Then is is built around these delusions, you know these these. This is my body. I'm like this, I look like this, this is, and then, then we, we live in a society where we compare, you know, who is, who is good looking, who isn't, who, <laughs> how, what, how you should look, if, you know, the perfect appearance and the strange variations are on, on noses and chins and eyes and <laughs> we develop, you know, preferences or we're conditioned to see, uh, you know, th- this is beautiful, but this isn't. So, like a lot of things in, uh, you know, cultural, what what different cultures regard as beautiful do- may not seem beautiful to somebody from another culture. I mean, because they're, they're not conditioned to see it in that way. <coughs> So then, then, uh, then, to in this reflectiveness, then you're using uh, sati sampachanya, sati panya, and you know, discerning the way it is, it's like this. And then uh, this discernment sees all sate sankara and icha. All conditions are impermanent, and and this is this is 
a reminder. It's not a doctrine or position to take, but it's it's a reminder uh, to 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 s- you know not give so much importance and and be caught and overwhelmed by the quality, whether it's beautiful or ugly. But it's it's seeing the the it's changing this. It's anita. Because an uh, nature is is uh, is the characteristic of conditioned phenomena. It's not a quality. A nature isn't good or bad, or beautiful or ugly. It's not right or wrong. You know, it's not a matter of, of uh, evaluating a nature or impermanence, but uh, it's a it's a characteristic that common to all conditioned phenomena. So. It, this way, you're 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 stopping the, the tendency to believe all the, w- the your projections, your conditioning, by observing this is the characteristic of of changingness. Now, in mental experience, things move like thinking moves very rapidly. And so you have a have a good thought or a bad thought. A true thought or a false thought, um, big thought or little thought. <laughs> <laughs> but thinking, you know, is uh, you know, you just observe. You know, thinking is something that, you know, r- depending on language, memory. So, and then we, you know, we s- we think we understand because we've got all this conditioning, uh, you know. Uh, about the the conditioned realm, so in in reflection, and we're not thinking and evaluating and analyzing, but observing, witnessing. So to see the uh, impermanence of the body, you know. I to see, you know, how each day it gets older, I, uh, I don't really, you know, it, it's it's much slower than the thoughts, isn't it? So <laughs> it's taken me seventy-two years to get this old, physically. <laughs> <laughs> where, where uh, I am seventy-two years old, you know, goes by, you know, it's like that. It's finished. The thought. Then the, then the the feeling of I am seventy two years old. It's an interesting one, you know, because uh, that's a sense of me being the body, and and seventy two seems old, you know. Somebody, you know that, and and they, you know, now they say, well, in Britain these days. Uh, you know, 70's only about 50, uh, used to be, you know. <laughs> you know, people used to be old at 50, but now we live longer. And there's a kind of truth to that, you know, you're know, not particularly, you know, decrepit. But, uh, <laughs> but when I was in India, you know, a few years ago, and, and they found out I was 70 years old, they that's really old in India. <laughs> <laughs> because there, you know, the lifespan, like for men, is only about 50. Here, 70, you know, isn't, is not w- really old. But it seems really old when I think of, of, of I am 72. Because, uh, the, you know, when you're young, you think of somebody 72 as really old. And th- so that's the way the mind's conditioned. You know, conditioned to see 72 is really old. Then mentally, you know, when, when there's no grasping of perception, there's no sense of being old or being 72. I I have to think that and uh, and identify with that.
So in consciousness, it does, consciousness doesn't get old. Doesn't it? But it, uh, you know, but, but the body, it's going through its its natural, you know, arising, ceasing. And this is, the, you know, I'm on the cessation side of getting there to the to the end. So th- this is, <laughs> so this is, uh, you know, this is just the way it is, the way of reflecting, and. And th- where when we see ourselves as, you know, I'm, you know, you hear people saying, I'm 72 years young. My God, <laughs> sickening. <laughs> you know, refusing to face the fact. <laughs> <laughs> because old age is, is not particularly, you know, it's not a flattering perception, is it? You know, it's the kind of, in, in this country, you feel you know, old people are a bit sidelined and you know no longer economically productive and <laughs> you know they're worried about in the future you know there'd be so many old people that you know that the health system will get overwhelmed and <laughs> all the worries about increasing aging population. Because, you know, the, we see old age people are, you know, it's not, you know, you're not held out a bit of a nuisance, really, drain on the on the society. Where youth is highly praised, isn't it? Being young, vigorous, <coughs> beautiful, you know, economically productive. And this is, this is praised and admired, you know, being young. <coughs> where being old is, you know, we feel compassion towards the elderly. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> In Thailand, where I lived, you know, they uh, they tend to love their old people. So, so they say, used to tell me, you know, Thais like getting old <laughs> because <laughs> they don't have to work so hard anymore and they get a lot of respect. <laughs> Because the the cultural value is different, isn't it? It's old age is is considered, uh, you know, respect you respect the elderly. So these are in the, the cultural values say are different in in different societies. <coughs> but so the perception, you know, of yourself as being seventy two. You know, observing that, you know, just that that I am 72, I am an old man, is like this. You know, I can begin to just notice emotionally how that feels. But then, you know, having explored this for so many years, you know, you've seen awareness of, uh, that I create this. These are perceptions I'm creating. I'm an I is a is a creation. Am and an old man is old and man are something I create into the into the consciousness. I am the body. Uh, this is my body. Is something I create. Where in reflective reflecting the body is you know awareness of the body is is not claiming it as some personal possession but ex- it's experience <laughs> we're experiencing the body at this very moment you know when you when you're aware then there's the body is you know you feel it's it's uh, heat or it's cold or it's pain or it's pressure sitting sitting on the on the on this um, mat. <coughs> you can uh, pressure yes, you notice uh, of the right hand resting on the on the left one. Or uh, the sitting posture, sitting is like this. You know, the the four postures sitting, standing, walking, lying down. And experiencing the body 
The body is in consciousness rather than consciousness is in the body. Like in the West, we tend to think of consciousness as the brain and it's in our skull. Consciousness is in your head. But the body's not in the head. And the body's in the consciousness in terms of the reality of this moment. Because consciousness is embracing the body. So this 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 way of reflecting, you you're changing from the conventional way of looking, the conditioned uh, assumptions you make out of cultural conditioning and and uh, self identity to seeing the way it is, knowing the way it is. So like mindfulness of the body, you're aware of it. Like the the Goenka style of meditation is is uh, noting uh, uh, Vedana on the body. So you you know you go to and you kind of observe all this kind of sensations that you know uh, that you feel at the top of your head. So you. You you conscious you 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 fix your attention say in the top of your head so I don't have to have an out of body experience you know kind of float up to the ceiling to look at the top of my head I can just you know begin to notice the top just by thinking top of my head is and then my attention you know consciousness. And the attention is is the suggestion of top of the head. Then it's aware of this kind of sensations. They're not. I'm not feeling any strong sensation there. You know, it's not painful, not pleasurable, but there is a kind of tingling or you know, there's definitely some, something going on up there. But it's neutral, in the, in, at least at this moment, I'm experiencing neutral Vedana. But there is, there is a Vedana that I wouldn't bother to notice because it's not extreme unless I'm doing this, this uh, scanning type of practice. So you you know, and then you 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 follow the different you know parts of your body. So whatever you you bring into consciousness, like the right thumb, suddenly uh, you know there's an awareness of uh, because of that suggestion, the uh, it goes to the to the right thumb automatically. Say it was neutral. You know, the right thumb is not pleasurable or painful at this moment it's like this but you're certainly aware of it in consciousness and by just using the <coughs> Vedana physical sensation pleasure pain and neutral Vedana you know you're 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 you know you find that this will um this is a technique that, that does. It helps the body to relax. If you really do this, you know, you, after going scanning through the body and everything, the, you feel really relaxed. It's very relaxing. Get a lot of pity or you know, a physical sense of well being. So this is just to, you know, I'm sure most of you know this already, but just to remind 